Hello everybody, welcome back to the 51 Yarns Spin Along. This is week 21, which is true worsted. If you're new to this channel, then welcome. My name is Bex from the Tiny Fibre Studio podcast. And every week I do a video that corresponds with Ply Magazine's 51 Yarns Spin Along. Basically, there's a topic each week. And if you spin along and you post a photo to Facebook, Instagram or Ravelry with the hashtags that I've included in the description below, you stand the chance to win a year's subscription to Ply Magazine, which is very cool. Disclaimer, I'm not sponsored by, affiliated with, etc, etc, Ply Magazine in any way, shape or form. It's just a really useful resource. Because I'm still trying to catch up, having missed a few episodes, what I'm going to do is actually bring in some footage that I originally shot for the long wool episode. Um, I'll bring that in here because I went through the whole process in that video and it's a better use of my time to try and get caught up on the three episodes that I've missed rather than redoing something that I've essentially already done. As you may know if you've watched a few episodes of this series, I can sometimes be a little bit pedantic when it comes to the terminology and the methods of spinning. And it's not because I like to point out people's faults or disagree with people. It's just because when you're talking about a skill which is so historical, that's been used for so many hundreds of years, um, I think it's really important to use correct terminologies and for everybody to understand what those terminologies mean uh, otherwise it all kind of gets muddied and that's not good for anybody so there are a lot of things in spinning a lot of different techniques that can be kind of a gray area and some people when they refer to something might mean one thing and some people might mean another um, top versus roving i might get into that later but that's a classic example but i feel like true worsted and true woolen are kind of like the bookends of spinning in the sense that if you do abc then you'll be spinning a true worsted yarn if you do xyz you'll be spinning a true woolen yarn and hopefully we can all agree on what a true worsted and a true woolen yarn are and that way everybody's just clear about how to describe at least those two things, even if there are loads of other grey areas <laughs> in our spinning lives. True worsted is not just about the way that you draft your fibre. So let's start with the fibre preparation. Um, true worsted yarn is spun with hand combed top where all of the tips of the fibre point in the same direction so they're all aligned and they're kept parallel throughout the process of preparation and spinning. Um, you would usually remove that fibre from the combs with something called a diz. A diz is literally just some kind of object with a hole in it that you can pass the fibre through and it allows you to pull the fibre through while still keeping all of those fibres nicely aligned. In my case, um, I use these Valkyrie extra fine um, combs. They have two rows of tines and they're pretty suitable for almost anything apart from maybe extremely, extremely fine fibres. Uh, there is a fantastic chart out there somewhere on the internet and I will endeavour to try and find it for you. There is this brilliant chart which looks specifically at Valkyrie combs, but it breaks down um, how good they are with different types of fibres. The reason I bought these was because they were good to very good to excellent at any of the types of fibres that I thought I might be spinning or preparing anytime soon. So that was the ones that I went for. With a lot of combs, you also have something that they attach to so that you can mount them to a table. So with mine, they have this little um, jig that they sit in and it just goes on like that. You then clamp this to a table so that it's really, really nice and secure so that if you're pulling your fibres through that it's not going to come flinging off. It kind of goes without saying, but you know, safety first when you're working with big metal spikes that are like four or five inches long, uh, you probably want to be just a little bit careful. I always 
put the cats in another room when I'm using these because um, I can just see them deciding to kind of jump up and get involved and managing to impale themselves on my wool combs and I really don't want that. don't want the blood all over my wool combs apart from anything else. I'm kidding, I wouldn't want the cats getting injured. You can also hand hold these combs so um, I'll, I'll keep the protectors on them for the moment but you could also hand hold the combs as well and in which case you just hold one fairly static while the other one passes through. Um, personally I just feel like that's a little bit more um, stress on the arms and the wrists and so on and why would you do that if you don't need to so I just keep mine mounted in their little block when I'm using mine. You would then take your fibre and set it up so that you've got the butt end of each lock in the combs, set into the combs, and then you just do a pass of the combs, trying to comb from the very tip of the fibre and not trying to catch too far in. Uh, if you try and go too far into the fibre, you're going to end up with your comb just getting stuck and the and everything's just going to get messy. If you think about it as I still have pretty long hair but when I was a kid and you know my mum was brushing it it's always so much easier if you start from the bottom and work your way up and it's kind of like that with combing you always want to start from the bottom that way you're keeping those fibres nicely aligned. You may also find it useful to use some kind of conditioning milk as your doing your combing. Um, there are recipes out there for combing milk all over the place on the internet. Um, I just use a little bit of hair conditioner in a spray bottle with some water. That seems to do the trick and that's really just to reduce the amount of static that you're having to deal with. You may need to do multiple passes. Once you're happy that it has been nicely combed so that all the fibres have been um, separated but they're still parallel, and as much uh, VM, vegetable matter, as possible has been removed, then you would use a diz to take it off the combs. So a diz is really just any kind of object with a hole in it that you can pass the fibre through. So you would just, in, in my case, I like to just grab a little bit of the fibre and just twist it slightly to just get it started so that it comes through the hole in my diz, which in my case is actually just a button with a hole drilled a little bit bigger than it originally was. And then I pull a little section through, move the diz back, pull another little section through and just keep going. You don't want to break the staple. So in the same way as when you're spinning, you don't want to break the staple. You also don't want to break the staple when you're using a diz either. So you just keep pulling and pushing the diz back each time and you'll end up with a nice little snake of fibre and you can then just gently curl that around so that you get a little nest of fibre. It's a very pleasing thing the first time you do that. You're kind of like, yeah, that's, that's nice. That's a nice thing, a nice object. You would also be very wise to mark which end you originally started dizzing from. In other words, which end is the tip of the fibre so that you know which end you're going to start spinning from. That's a very handy thing. So when I finish winding my little nests of fibre, I just pop the end of it up through the middle so that I know where I can start from. And then when it comes to the spinning, there are a couple of things to consider. The first thing is that unlike with woolen spun yarns, which can be really uneven in the singles, but then when you ply them, they've got that amazing ability to kind of balance themselves and kind of fill out all of the thinner spots. True worsted yarns are not like that at all. <laughs> you will see any thick and thin bits if you are plying, particularly if you're just doing something like a two ply um, or of course the singles, you're really going to notice those thick and thin sections. So it's a slow process, but take the time to try to make sure that you maintain the same thickness, the same consistency as you go through. A true worsted yarn is spun short forward draw. So always moving your drafting hand 
back to your fibre supply hands and then pulling forward rather than holding and then pulling your fibre supply hand back. As you do that, you're going to try and make sure that no twist enters the drafting triangle. So you're going to make sure that your front hand is really stopping that twist coming through into the drafting triangle. And as you allow the twist in, you're also going to be compressing and smoothing that yarn so that you end up with what you want from a true worsted, which is a nice, dense, drapey, um, hard wearing fibre. So as a little recap, true worsted yarn is from a hand combed fibre, probably a longer staple length rather than the shorter one from fibre that has been combed with all the tips facing in the same direction, taken off the combs with a diz, and then spun short forward draw, making sure that you can press and smooth as you go along. And if you do those things, you will be producing a true worsted yarn and you will have one of the bookends of spinning in your repertoire. If you want to learn more about true woolen, that was episode six of 51 Yarns. So I will uh, put a little link to that video at the end of this one so that you can click to go back there if you would like to look at the true woolen version. So next week, we're gonna be doing energized singles. That's week 22. Week 23, I have just started prepping for because I have been splitting up all of my fibers for the fractal week. That is all still to come. In between now and the next episode, you can find me on Instagram as Tiny Fibre Studio and on Ravelry, I'm Ibex. You can also leave me a thumbs up and a comment here on YouTube. Those are very much appreciated. Don't forget to let other people know if you think that they would be interested in the content on this channel and also hit the subscribe button if you'd like to be kept up to date with when I do a new episode. So in between now and the next episode, I hope this was useful. Enjoy your spinning this week and I will see you again very soon.